So, yes, our first guest is James Lance. And last week he debuted his new documentary. And here's the trailer. What it feels like is that you wanted it to last 10 years. Because I thought I was going to lose. You're not fucking listening, Jim. You're not listening. You're being cynical and you're barely listening. You're not listening. In this corner, Chick-fil-A, a fast food corporation with more than 1,500 locations and annual sales totaling more than $3.5 billion. In this corner, Bo Muller Moore, a guy in Vermont who makes t-shirts in his garage. There you go, folks. Eat more cow shirt. What in the world are they doing this for? The, the idea that you can't use eat more kale on a t-shirt because somebody else has registered eat more chicken is crazy. So have we come to the point that we allow people to own a specific word? When you're dealing in a situation where attorneys are being paid by the hour, as long as they can drag things out, as long as, as the pot can be stirred, somebody's going to make money. On the 10-year anniversary of the Eat More Kale vs. Chick-fil-A saga comes the documentary tale about a partially true, sometimes misleading, shaggy dog story from Vermont that was seen by millions and moved over 100,000 people to do something to support a t-shirt artist known as Bo the Eat More Kale Guy. I would like a little of that. How am I going to handle this? It's a big pond and there are a lot of people in the United States. Not everybody's heard of this. Look at me. Look at me. I, I got a song and dance for you. Chick-fil-A said, don't do it. And I said, fuck you. And she's got my balls in her hand. Yeah. She's yeah. the one. I will sell a million dollars worth of Eat More Kale shirts in the near future. So let's bring in the writer, director, and producer of that documentary, James Lance. James, come on in. Hi, James. Amber, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. It's good to see you, friend. All right. Good so to see you too. We're, we're going to talk about that documentary because there's a lot to talk about. But uh, yeah. I, want to get a, I want to get a little more background to what were you doing before you started making films, and tell, particularly about writing plays. I'd like to hear about that. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I started out in Virginia in uh, the Shenandoah Valley, and um, I got a, a teaching degree, and I taught, uh, I have a very agricultural background, so I taught uh, agriculture in high schools in the Shenandoah Valley for four years, a very conservative, very small town, Virginia, and uh, when, I, uh, when I met my wife, uh, we decided, you know what, it's time for us to, uh, to move on, and uh, we moved north, moved to New York City, lived there for a few years, and I had caught the uh, the film bug uh, beforehand, the playwriting bug beforehand, and had started doing some writing. And then uh, we moved to Vermont and uh, um, established our family here. And uh, it's been uh, it's been gosh, we I guess we've been here over twenty years now, and it's been a great place. We've been really so, lucky. So why Vermont? What brought you? What prompted you to move to Vermont? We were living in New York City. It was right before 9-11 happened. And we had two young kids. And uh, New, York's, uh, New York was a hard place to raise young children, schlepping them on and off of uh, subways. Um, there were days we would take our kids to school, and the subway was so crowded, we'd hold their hands and you couldn't see them because we knew we had them because we had their hand. But it was just it was just really crowded. And so it just it just felt like it was... It was time to move on. It's expensive. And so uh, we opened up a map and we said, where are we going next? And uh, uh, my wife had been to Vermont before and she said, well, what about Vermont? And we came up here and we found a great community and we haven't looked back, not once. So you did write a play and called The Bus. The Bus, and yes. The Bus. Tell me about The Bus. What prompted you writing it? And then what happened with the production? Well, that's, that's the first play that we did up here. And uh, I ran into uh, a talented uh, theater artist here. I think you might know him, uh, Seth Jarvis. He's directed me, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Seth is great. He's great. He, uh, so we got to talking, and uh, I had this idea for a play. 
And um, the reason that I had the idea is that uh, um, we, at that time, we had a family member who was having some struggles uh, around sexuality and, and things like that. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to be as supportive and as helpful with that as we could. And uh, I got to thinking like, well, gosh, you know, how would this have been different uh, if this had all happened in Virginia, where I grew up? And I think it was was it would have happened very differently, and uh, that's where the bus came out of. I I uh, I come from a very uh, a very uh, a conservative area in Virginia. I, I it's a beautiful place, but it's they're they're very conservative, and um, uh, and so that's where it came from. It came from that that seed of thinking like, well, well, how would this have looked differently elsewhere? And uh, it was called the bus. It was about two gay teens. Uh, sharing a budding relationship in a church bus, and uh, and that was that was kind of fascinating to me that this that this thing that was was new and was precious and pure and beautiful was happening inside this institution that frowned upon it, and uh, and what would that look like? And uh, uh, we pulled it off here in Burlington. We had a great cast. Yeah, Seth yeah. Di Seth directed the play. And uh, we had uh, so su supportive audiences. Dennis McSorley, who I still work with as an actor, was in the play. Uh, ben Van Buren and Colin Kramer played the two kids. Uh, it was a blast. It really was. And uh, um, I, 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 I dare say I don't think that we uh, that I've ever had a, a more fulfilling art experience than that. It was just extraordinary. The community really welcomed the play, welcomed us. It was just it was fun. It was extraordinary. What happened though after you performed it here in Vermont? That's the big story. Well, yeah. Well, then I started sending it out, and we got interest uh, from uh, from people, you know, around the world and around, uh, you know. So we uh, we ended up uh, taking a different version of it uh, off Broadway to a theater called Fifty Nine E Fifty Nine, and uh, uh, basically the same story, but it was retooled a little bit. And uh, a talented director by the name of John Simpkins. Uh, put it on there, and uh, we had a great cast, and uh, that cast is still doing great things. Will Rowland, who is one of the actors in that play, is now on Broadway regularly. He was in uh, Dear Evan Hansen and a, a couple of other Broadway plays, so we're really proud of him. And we took uh, it on the road to Kansas. Yep, we took it to Kansas too, yeah. And uh, so first we, we played at 59 e 59 but then we took it to Kansas, uh, and played it in like literally within blocks of the Westboro Baptist Church. And <laughs> that was that was just extraordinary. We played in the bottom of a church called the MCC Church. It was in this in this church basement. We didn't have any theater lights, and so we lit it all with candles. Um, and the community came. We probably had um, an audience of like 250 people, and uh, it was it was just again the most beautiful thing. And uh, we had one gentleman who. Uh, I swear to God, Amber, he he cried three quarters of the way through the, the play. It was just I could see him, and he was just bawling during the whole thing. And um, it was it just it, was, it could have been his story. It, you know, it, it could have been. It could. It could have been. And so we uh, and, and we took the cast and crew uh, by the Westboro Baptist Church and uh, waved to them. And uh, and oh, actually, too, we had uh, Nate. I can't remember his last name. It was the church's name. Uh, but one of the one of the children from the Westboro Baptist Church introduced us to the community. He had broken from the church, and um, yeah, it was just an extraordinary thing. And so we took a van out. We took the we took the set, the whole set that we played off Broadway, and uh, then we uh, we came home, and it was just a, a really good thing. And then I guess the news got out, and so the play has played. It played in uh, South Africa. Uh, it's played in London. It's played a, a couple of places around the world. How exciting. How yeah. exciting. And for those who may not remember, the Westboro Baptist Church, they're the ones who go all over the country saying God hates fags right. at, yep. at funerals and all and that at stuff. The time, at the time, they were really visible. They were really yes. out there. And uh, that really pissed me off. You know, <laughs> it, it just, well, it just, it just, it's just such an awful, evil thing. And, um, and it just pissed me off. And I just thought, how can we, how can we get attention for this? How can we, how can we really stick it to them, you know, as best we can? So um, it was, that's what we did. 
Well, very good. All right, we're going to take a little break here, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the Kale documentary. James, Absolutely. Stay right where you are. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes, we have more. We're going to talk about the Kale documentary. A lot of twists and turns on that.